Karting Tourism Summit 2011 got underway in Johannesburg this week. The summit looks at innovative ways to position the province's tourism sector. Karting is the most visited province in the country as it traditionally has been uh, the primary point of entry for international investors. Samantha Loring spoke to Mike Tatalias, who is CEO of Southern Africa Tourism Services Association. Well, we need to understand them a lot better. They are coming, and they're coming through our major airport, the Oliver Tambo Airport in, in Kaleni side of Gauteng. That's a huge opportunity. If you look at the numbers flowing through, maybe they are on the leisure side going on to do other things in the other part of the country. Well, that's great. That's what got them there, if it's Cape Town or Durban or the Kruger. Those are the things that got them in the aeroplane to come to South Africa. What we need to do is work on getting them one more night. That would double the figures into the into Gauteng. So we've got to understand them incredibly well, what they're looking for, and then pitch at their message level as to things that they're going to do, vibey happening things. Talk about this as the New York of Africa. Sort of get a trend. We're not going to be the prettiest city in the, in the world, not yet. We could fix that over time. But we are vibey. We are where the economy is. Johannesburg and the cities around here are the top five uh, GDP economies of Africa. People need to understand the significance of that, the, how much action, how much vibe, how much creativity exists here. The New York of Africa, that's quite catchy. How do you position the province in this light? Well, two parts. One, we need to get, work with other partners like DTI and the other big national ones, talking to foreign investors that Gauteng's where it all sort of happens. That gets them coming out, whether they come for a holiday or not. Business people will go, I need to spend at least a day or two what, running around in Gauteng, see what it's got to offer, even if I've come on holiday with my family, just to get a sense of what things look like. So when I come to do business, I feel comfortable coming back. Certainly for markets like China and India, if you can get people comfortable enough to bring their family, even if for a short holiday, it makes it open to them going, ooh, I can see the opportunities. In most of Europe, the kind of companies we've seen investing in South Africa are huge, big multinationals. In a, an economy like India, over 40% of the exports come from small and medium enterprises. But you've got to get a small businessman and his smaller family into South Africa to see that it's a comfortable place that they can get around, speak English, do the roads. Now, the latest Tourism Business Council of South Africa's Tourism Business Index indicates a lull in business tourism. In fact, tourist numbers throughout South Africa are down for domestic as well as international tourism. Is this indicative of where the economy sits at this moment when it comes to a sluggish recovery? Or is South Africa losing its shine as a tourist destination? Both. Uh, the, w the fact is the world has been in a recession from 2008. Our really big events, the sports events of 2009 and to obviously soccer in 2010, gave us a bit of a soft cushion in terms of protecting us from that. It kept us going on the leisure side. Now we're starting to feel the cold, icy winds whipping around our ankles that the rest of the world has felt for a while. What we also need to do, though, is take responsibility ourselves, other destinations are too, and coming up with creative plans on how to get customers out. One of the key things is as a nation, we need to be out there telling the world through the International Marketing Council, Brand South Africa, and everyone else, DERCO, the Foreign Affairs, DTI, Tourism, all working together to sell the concept of we just did the World Cup. We did an incredible thing. Look but at But why are we not capitalizing on that? Why a year later are tourism numbers down when they should have been up? Well, everyone was predicting that. When the predictions were made, that was when the, when the world was in a different space in 2006, 2005, when the world was booming all around. We now have to take account of the fact that it's not a simple sell. Just doing the World Cup, as we thought and we planned in 2000, isn't just going to do it. Yes, we got recognized. Yes, people noticed us, and they're doing a fantastic job. But now we've got to do a lot more to convince people to get in an airplane or get out in their car from around the country, around the region, get in whatever it is you need to get to, to get to Gauteng, to South Africa, to start to spend and start to enjoy. Whatever it is you're coming for, is it a conference, a meeting, uh, research, come and do things with your family, see some wildlife. We are probably one of the best wildlife destinations in the planet. We have some of the most unique stuff uh, in terms of biodiversity. The world is going, getting green focused. We now need to tell them how we're a green destination, and how they can re-energize, catch with their soul. Mankind is supposed to start here, hence we've got the cradle of mankind. There's lots of messages we could be combining to get people to think, okay, if I'm only going to do one trip this year, it better be South Africa because we're competing with some very active destinations. We're looking a long, lot longer um, term now mm. with Vision 2055 for the country. Where does Gauteng's tourism sector fit within that? Well, tourism is one of the key drivers of the economic growth plan. Minister Patel put that in the new growth path. Tourism's been a focused sector in, in the ski set before, and that's the right thing it should be. It's a relatively easy industry to create jobs if you can move tourists. It's a relatively simple mathematical figure. Currently, we produce 
jobs at the rate of one job for every high spending international, t uh, 16 high spending tourists that arrive. So the more six sets of 16 people you bring in, you have to employ people to service them. So that that creates jobs. So it's right that tourism should So how does carting fit into that? By looking for 2055, we start to see big and scary trends. We will still be an economic hub of Africa, but we're going to have dramatically reduced rainfall. So we're going to have to make very careful plans as to how our cities use water, how we entertain people. But if we're going to, we've already put a city, it's the largest city in the world, Johannesburg, that doesn't have a river because of the gold. So we used a lot of ingenuity over 100 years to get a fantastically well-organized city in the middle of nowhere. It's going to take a lot of ingenuity again to get it to function as a leading example in the world of how you make a green city. So we should start to think about getting people out to see the environment, the game reserves, and how we're greening the city and tell them about the journey that we're on. We, the World Cup was a milestone of where we want to go. Uh, Sisulu, Tambo, Mandela, they put us on the road of where we wanted to go. 94 was key and pivotal, but now we've got to talk about 2055, where we want to be and what we want to look like at the time and how we get there. Key to that is keeping people employed and enjoying and working. And then the society can start to function and people be creative about fixing the society themselves. If we don't get the jobs in the meantime, it's not going to work. Well, it's going to be a much gloomier 2055 vision. So tourism is a key part of getting rural and smaller sector businesses involved in the economy so that they can start to invest and grow themselves.